Hello Bond Investors, thank you for joining me. Today I want to talk about DraftKings. So my name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. We're going to talk about the bullish consideration facing DraftKings. Then we're going to talk about some of the detractions that I see taken away from its valuation. And lastly, we're really going to just discuss how the stock is priced. So let's get started. So DraftKings, the biggest, most bullish consideration here is that this is a very fast growing betting company, okay? So it made a few acquisitions um, last year. So reported here, you can see that the company is guiding for approximately 79% year over year growth rates for 2021, okay? So we're about to go into Q2 earning seasons for DraftKings. And I fully expect that they would actually raise this guidance even higher. Uh, they probably would have been conservative on the going in, so they probably halfway through the year would raise the guidance there. So it's a very fast growing company, okay? So this is attracting a lot of investors. And I just get the impression that a lot of the bullish pieces of stuff that I read online, it's about the first mover, the, 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 the player that's been able to get a lot, a lot of the regulations sorted to be able to bet in many different states. But I just question that because how long until other betting companies are also going to be able to be approved to, to get betting on in certain states? I think it's just a matter of time. I don't think that there's enough of a moat here to really get the customer really loyal long term because ultimately what the customer wants is to have a game and the potential to win. And if your competitor has bigger incentives or more aggressive on the pricing, you know, those customers will just fleet to wherever they want to go. Because, you know, if you have to bear in mind, those bettors often would have be betting on many different platforms anyway. So I don't think that there's a lot of loyalty here and it's not a particularly sticky cohort. Obviously, uh, DraftKings would counter that and they would say that they, and they, and they do point out that their customer retention is above 100%. So, you know, you can, there are two sides of the argument there. What, 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 if I was a shareholder here, the thing that I would be really looking into is when they report Q2, how many monthly unique payers did they get? Did they get more than 1.5 million on average per month? So, uh, is the number of monthly unique payers up more than 100% year over year? In, during Q2. So I'm if I was a shareholder here, I wouldn't really be looking too aggressively at the average revenue going up per user, but I'd be really looking to see that influx of users. Because then later on you can you can play around and you can increase the amount of average of, of revenue, but you really want to continue to see a large number of users coming in and just sticking around. You know, want to see some data about the retention. Now as I noted in the introduction, there are some bearish considerations here. So the biggest thing that I can, I, that I can point out to is that there are so many different gambling outlets. And it ultimately, if the, the customers, if the, the competitors have, have more compelling offers, games that are more sticky, more attractive, gamblers will just go to wherever they want to go. You know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of loyalty in this game. And there's there, a lot of it is to do as well with having new games. You know, gamblers want to play something new as well and jazzy and stuff like that. So I think that that's one of the aspects here. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that even though DraftKings revenue is really just growing, growing really, really fast, you can see here on the adjusted EBITDA line, it's quite negative. So if you take a step back and just think about the business model as a whole, its gross margins during Q1 were 41%, okay? So this is just before, just just right at the top of the income statement, so it's 41%. So even if you take out loads of sales and marketing and you take you, you just cut everything to the bare bone, is this company gonna be able to have 5% operating margins anytime soon? <laughs> I don't know, I, it's, it's gonna be difficult, I think. I mean, you're just not seeing a lot of operating leverage here. And can it get 10%? I mean, it's gonna be, it's really, really difficult to see a reasonable path that this company over any time soon is gonna have 
it's gonna be close to break even. So with that in mind, um, you know, the stock is priced at 17 times forward Celsius. It is growing very, very fast, and you, that's a valid argument. And if you're willing to take a leap of faith and you're willing to hold on to this company for let's say three or four years, it's possible that DraftKings can grow into that valuation. That's possible. Um, you know, it, it, a, a lot of factors come into play there, but I am kind of skeptical that paying up so much for that is really worthwhile. So I'm just going to put in a company. I own this company. I own skills. Uh, I'm a shareholder there. So that's the caveat right there. So I'm probably biased in my appraisal there. But skills is also priced at very similar valuations, kind of a nudge lower, 16 times forward sales rather than 17 times forward sales for DraftKings. But skills contends that by 2022, they're already going to be on the break-even line, so it's already it's it's a business model which is much more attractive to me because what they all they have just as a platform where they have approximately nine thousand developers all trying to get their game to surface, and Skills just takes a fee from that, so they don't have to invest anything in the games because the developers are devel investing the games. So it's more of a marketplace in a sense that so you you they get. The, they have to invest in the user acquisition in the same way the DraftKings invest into getting um, customers on board, but they don't have to invest anything in terms of the games. So it's a more compelling, I believe, more compelling um, business model here. But in any case, when everything boils down to it, I just don't know how long it's going to take until DraftKings is going to be profitable. Um, so with that in mind, if you want to find out which kind of stocks I own, uh, stuff like skills, I have other investments as well, don't forget to check out my marketplace. You're welcome to do a totally free trial to see if it suits you. Cancel anytime before 14 days and you know, if you like it, you stick around and if you don't, at least you tried. And um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. Okay.